my hair. This video is going to be a little bit different to my regular content, but it also offers an explanation as to why I haven't been posting as frequently as I used to. I've never really said this before, but thank you for 300 subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to me. It's really good to see that people are actually enjoying the content that I make. The first reason why I haven't been posting as often is because I'm actually really busy taking care of Minip. And also, if you watched one of my previous videos, you'll know that I nursed a king parrot back to health. Well, he's back with us. He's actually nearly ready to be released again, but he did get sick out in the wild. So we had to treat him for 45 days and he's nearly ready again to go back out there. So we'll see how he goes with that. So that's been a bit of a handful, but I've also been suffering with my own health problems as I have been for a long time. And you probably wouldn't know that because that's not the purpose of my channel but I wanted to talk about it anyway. Throughout my life, I've had many health issues. From when I was a kid, I've always suffered from headaches. They've been very prominent throughout my life. There was a time when I was a kid that I had bloating and I had this hernia, but I think that's gone away now. Can't be sure because right now I am suffering from major gut issues and bloating in particular. Sometimes I look three months pregnant. Yeah, I've actually been consistently bloated for a couple of years now. <laughs> I did a gap year after high school in 2014 and that's when I noticed my gut issues really started to kick in. I was also having symptoms that resembled diabetes, like uh, getting sweaty, shaky and just weak in general. I had to eat food to feel better. I just wasn't doing so well and the doctors were concerned. So I got tested for diabetes, it always came back negative, which sounds like a good thing, but I still didn't have an answer for what was wrong with me. And these symptoms continued into my first year of university in 2015. This was a problem for me, especially during the three hour practical classes that we had to do. I fainted during one of those classes and I had to leave and go eat food just to feel better. I also had lots of issues with my bladder and the doctor said I had overactive bladder syndrome because I was going very frequently, a lot, all the time. And Minnie was to say hi. <laughs> what a good girl. <laughs> I got tested for diabetes again and it came back negative. And this entire time I was having these symptoms, I was also having gut related issues. Eventually I was tested for diabetes again and this time they diagnosed me with pre-diabetes. I saw a dietitian, he was surprised about those results. I then saw an endocrinologist who was also surprised by those results and he essentially debunked those results altogether and said, you are misdiagnosed. You do not have pre-diabetes. He took one look at my stomach and said, you've got gut issues, bad. The reason I saw the endocrinologist was to rule out any hormonal issues as well. So they were ruled out. And again, I was back to square one. <laughs> what the heck is wrong with me? My second year of uni, 2016, the pain started, intense. Pain. I couldn't get out of bed. My whole body was aching. You know when you have a really bad flu and you get the whole body aches? That's what it felt like. But it wouldn't go away. <laughs> I went through so many blood tests. They tested me for celiac disease that came back negative, but they did say I didn't rule it out, so I don't like that. But yeah, I got so many blood tests and all of my tests came back normal and good, which is supposed to be good, but it wasn't good for me because I still didn't have an answer. My pain and all the other symptoms continued for two years before I was finally diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Basically, it was a process of eliminating other things. I was originally diagnosed by a doctor from Atticus Health in Hastings. And then he referred me on to a rheumatologist to confirm that diagnosis. So I saw Dr. Christy Yap from Peninsula Rheumatology and she confirmed my diagnosis in 2018. 
Unfortunately, fibromyalgia is one of the many conditions out there that is highly misunderstood. Research has improved in the recent years, but as far as treatment options, there is no cure, only management techniques. Gotta love that. Basically, what that means is I'll be suffering from these symptoms that are fibromyalgia related for the rest of my life. We fast forward to 2021. Today, I still have fibromyalgia, but my gut issues are much worse, much, much worse. So I decided to do something about it and I looked into gut specialists in my area and I found one in Melbourne, Dr. Iggy Suse. He had very good reviews. So I called up their clinic. They asked me to fill in some forms, describe my symptoms and all of that before they agreed to see me. After reading my forms, they decided to help me. But it is a very expensive process to go through, not just the initial consultation, but also the following tests you need to get, the following appointments, the following medications you might have to take. There's a lot of money involved with that. I took a test for mold exposure, which came back negative, so that was good. And then I took a SIBO test, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And that also came back negative, but I did have some complications during that test. You're supposed to do 10 breath samples, and I only got four in before I was sick, and the rest of the samples probably were compromised, but the results were negative even in the earlier samples before I was sick. I also sent off a stool sample for a complete microbiome map and that had results to show. There was a bacterial overgrowth called Streptococcus. So I had nine times the amount of Streptococcus than there should be. The Streptococcus species my doctor told me can cause the bloating, it can cause gut issues, it can cause depression, anxiety and brain fog. I've been experiencing a lot of those symptoms so I finally got an answer to what the heck is going on with me. And there were other things too like the healthy gut bacteria in my system is quite low. And there's another thing. It's called a GIT marker, and one of those in particular was off the charts. So, I'm going to be going on a lot of medication. The doctor said that my gut is leaky, so we need to fix that. I'm going on probiotics. I'm also going to be taking some medication to fix the toxicity levels and the gut lining. And I'm also going to be taking a course of antibiotics. All this medication will be coming to me soon because it's going to be express posted to me. And it was all very expensive. I think I spent $500 yesterday just on my appointment and medication alone. I really want to get better. I'm sick of being sick and I'm tired of being tired. And I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm currently unemployed and not looking for work because this is just too much for me. I've already got fibromyalgia. I've worked two separate jobs with that condition already and struggled in different ways. The first one was working from home and I found it hard to be sitting down all day. The second one was very, very physical and I actually found an improvement of my symptoms. But as soon as I got home and sat down, it was like, a rush of pain came back to me. There's definitely going to be more videos to come, so if you're interested in seeing those, please subscribe because it makes me feel really good. If you subscribe, I get one more subscriber and that's all I could ask for.